Well, good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the Minister ML Kimmel coming to you live with our Bible study tonight. For whatever reason, my Sefer is not pulling up, so I cannot pull up what I want to show you guys as I'm reading, and we're going to study. So I'm going to read this and pull this up from my phone. Tonight, we're going to deal with the prophet Enoch. Now, I know you might feel like the prophet Enoch is not part of your biblical history or your biblical scripture, but I will hear, but I'm here to tell you that it is. You must understand that Enoch was Yahuwah's first scribe. He was the first person to learn the writings and to learn how to write what the Most High told him to write down. But for whatever reason, uh, we get into the, today's church and everybody says, oh, his book was not inspired and this and that and the other, which is a scamified scam because at the end of the day, how in the world was he Yahuwah's first scribe if you're going to sit here and tell me what he wrote does not apply? That to me sounds like a complete scam and the reality of it is you just don't want to know the truth. So I'm going to go into the book and we're going to read some of what Enoch wrote tonight. Please like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can visit us online at kns-ministries.org. Enoch chapter one, I'm going to start at verse number one. He says, the word of the blessing of Enoch, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble, rejecting all the unrighteous and wicked. Enoch, a righteous man who was with Yahuwah, answered and spoke while his eyes were open, and he saw a holy vision in the heavens. This the angel showed me. From them I heard all things and understood what I saw that which will not take place in this generation, but in a generation which is to succeed at a distant period on account of the elect. Upon their account, I spoke and conversed with him. Who will go forth from his habitation, the Holy and Mighty One, the Elohim of the world? Who will hereafter tread upon Mount Sinai, appear with his host? and be manifested in the strength of his power from heaven. All shall be afraid, and the watchers be terrified. Great fear and trembling shall seize them, even to the ends of the earth. The lofty mountains shall be troubled, and the exalted hills depressed, melting like a honeycomb in the flame. So we must understand that Enoch is talking about end times. He's talking about a flame. So don't tell me that there is not a place that was created that is going to co consider uh, fire and flame. The earth shall be emerged and all things which are in it shall perish. So he's talking last days here. While judgment shall come upon all, even upon all the righteous. But to them shall he give peace. He shall guard the elect and towards them exercise clemency. You need to ask yourself is who is the elect that Enoch's talking about? Then shall all belong to Yahuwah, be happy and blessed in the splendor of Yahuwah, shall illuminate them. Behold, he comes with ten thousands of his holy men to ex execute judgment upon them and destroy the wicked and reprove all carnal for everything which the sinful and wicked have done and committed against him. So let me stop right there. Just so you understand, this particular scripture was stolen and put in the book of Jude. However, if you notice that this is what the prophet Enoch wrote. So how in the world did you come along and say exactly what the prophet Enoch wrote and you don't see anything with it? You don't see the scam. The reality of it is they took information from the Tanakh, put it into the New Testament so that they can convince you to worship another. The Most High always said, even in Malachi, I do not change. So how in the world did he change when he said, beside me, there is no other. There is no other savior. He said that I am Yahuwah. That is my name. To my glory, I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So where do we come up with this new stuff, this new age, whatever it is you want to say, however you want to put the scam on the, on the platter, it doesn't matter. He said 
that I do not change. So I need somebody to show me where he changed. Chapter three says, all who are in the heavens know what is transacted, that the heavenly luminaries change not their past, that each rises and sets regularly, everyone at its proper period without transgressing the commands. Again, he's talking about the commandments. You cannot be saved any other way besides obeying what he said. Now, I don't care if somebody told you you need to be baptized. I don't care if somebody told you you need to speak in tongues. I don't care if somebody told you you need to dance, you need to shout. If you don't obey his commandments, you are not saved, period. You don't get to live this life however you want to. He gave us instructions. He gave us commandments. And where do you get off saying that you don't have to obey them? Where do you get off saying that they have been fulfilled? Show me where they've been fulfilled. Because if you're going to tell me because somebody went to a cross, that's why the law has been fulfilled. If you can't show me that in scripture, then guess what? It's a scam. The commands, they behold the earth and understand what is the, they're transacted from the beginning to the end of it. That every work of Yahuwah is invariable in the period of its appearance. They behold summer and winter that the whole earth is full of water and that the cloud, the dew and the rain refresh it. They consider and behold every tree, how it appears to wither and every leaf to fall off, except of 14 trees, which are not deciduous, which wait from the old, to the appearance of the new for two or three winters. Again, they consider the days of the summer that the sun is upon it at its very beginning. While you seek for a covered and shady spot on account of the burning sun, while the earth is scorched up with fervent heat, he's talking about last days, and you become incapable of walking either upon the ground or upon the rocks in consequence of that heat. So we need to understand that why is he talking about heat and flame? If there's no such thing as hell and there's no such thing as all this stuff that they told you, if that's the case, then why is the prophet Enoch talking about it? You have to understand that you need to make a decision. And the reality is you are not going to live forever. So you have to decide where am I going to go when I leave this earth? You don't have all the all your life to make a decision. If that was the case, then you would be able to live forever. The bottom line is this. There is a place created. And the reality is, if you can't understand that you need to obey what the Most High put in his book, then guess what? You're not saved. I said it. Go tell your pastor. Go share it with your church. I don't care what denomination it is. If they're teaching you that the law has been fulfilled and you don't have to obey anymore and they can't show you that in scripture, then you are involved with a scam. I am the minister of Mel Kimball. You might be offended. I don't care. Show me something else in scripture and then we can have a discussion. If not, then you better understand that if you don't wake up and smell the coffee beans and read that book for yourself, you will be lost. Until next time, I'm the minister, M.L. Kimball. Be blessed on purpose.